Hey, Joe here from AWS. Today we're going to go through an introductory to shielded metal arc welding, or also known as stick welding. Like any welding process, we want to make sure that we're in a safe environment and utilizing the right safety equipment. First, let's start with the welding electrode. An electrode is made of, of simply a core wire and a flux coating. The flux simply burns off while the electrode is consumed to provide shielding for the molten puddle. The numbers on the electrode simply indicate tensile strength, welding position, and the composition of the electrode. So there's different sizes of electrodes here, and the size is indicated by the core wire, not by the full diameter of the flux coating. So it's important to always remember that. And these different sizes are used for depositing different amounts of weld material. Here's an E6010 electrode. We got E for electrode. The six and the zero is that 60 right there indicates tensile strength in thousands, so 60,000. We got a one here, that's welding position, and the one means all positions in this case. And then we got a zero, and that's welding composition, or what this electrode will produce. For more information, you can reference the AWS Pocket Handbook. The electrode is held by the electrode holder. The electrode holder, pretty straightforward, three parts. You have where it connects to the machine. This one happens to be a quick connect. You have the lead, which is gonna carry the current to the electrode holder. Simply squeeze this lever here, opens up the jaws. The electrode can drop in to a variety of positions. I prefer 90 degrees to start. Like all types of welding, we need to complete the circuit. The ground clamp does that job. With shielded metal arc welding, that is called the work clamp. Three basic components. The quick connect, which will go to the machine, the lead, which will carry the current, and finally, the clamp, which will be attached to the work or the material to be welded. Today, we're using 8th inch E6010, and we have our machine set up for DC electrode positive, which means I got the electrode holder connected to the positive terminal, and I have my work clamp connected to the negative terminal. Now, I've done a couple test passes here at about 90 amps, seems to be a sweet spot for this scrap quarter inch material. But let's talk about getting you set up for your first arc. Remember, once we turn that machine on, the current is live and the electrode is hot. When you're ready to weld, you can strike the arc by touching the electrode to the surface of the material and drag it in a motion like striking a match. This can be done simply by starting off the edge of the material, pulling it up about an eighth inch off the surface of the material and letting the arc establish. Remember, while we're welding, we need to make sure that we're maintaining an arc length of about an eighth of an inch. So that means we're gonna have to continuously feed this electrode into that molten pool. We also want to maintain proper travel and work angles. Our travel angle should be about 30 degrees. Our work angles should be no more than 10. And we're gonna simply drag across and maintain a consistent arc length and travel speed while welding. When ready to weld, we're gonna flip our helmet down and I'm gonna go ahead and start this arc. So I'm coming off the end of the plate, lifting it up, getting the bead started. Once the arc is established, I'm gonna maintain about an eighth of an inch arc length and a consistent work angle, travel angle, and travel speed. As you can see, the weld pool is established about 3 16 to 5 16 in diameter and we're slowly feeding in that electrode and giving it a little bit of a side-to-side -side motion, if any at all. 
Just trying to maintain consistency. Once you're done welding, you'll notice that there is a coating on the surface of the weld. That coating is called slag. Slag is the byproduct of the flux on the electrode that was consumed during the welding process. That slag has to be removed. To remove the slag, you'll use a chipping hammer and a wire brush. Use a chipping hammer to knock off the slag coating and then finish it with the wire brush. Once you're done with the weld, you want to remove the slag, brush it up, and then look at the profile of the bead. What we're looking for is something pretty simple, a consistent buildup, a consistent profile. The edges of the weld should transition smoothly into the base material from either side of the weld bead. And we should have a uniform pattern uh, as best as possible as we're moving across. Buildup should be convex or kind of like a hill shape on the surface of the material. And we should always try to make sure that we're not getting any undercut along the toes of the weld, which would be where the weld bead meets the surface of the material. And that undercut would be a gouge or a missing piece of the material. So we don't want to see any of that. A nice smooth transition along the toes of the weld. And that's introduction to shielded metal arc welding. Grab you some more scrap and some more 6010 electrodes and keep practicing those welds.